This is Principal's bear huddle. Where are the guys? Where are all the other principals? Guys? Captain America was here to help you. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime you make sure you call Captain America when you need help. Thank you. Sorry I was late, Mr. Ketterer. I am superhero's job is never done. Did you know that I saved a little dog in distress, stopped it in alien invasion, and saved the world twice, all before breakfast today? Wait a minute. What's missing here? Where's Mr. Pavlich and Mr. McGinnis, and why are you in your secret identity? Oh. Good morning, gentlemen. Please accept my apologies for being late. Where on earth have you been? I haven't been on earth. There were some problems at Asgard. And besides that, the weather was terrible. <laughs> Mr. Kidder, no costume? And where's Mr. Pavlich? I don't know. Where is Mr. Pavlich? I'll give him a call. Why so late? Gotham traffic. Principals, we have work to do. It is time to start our bear huddle. Wait, Mr. Ketterer. Didn't you read the email? No secret identities this week for Principal's bear huddle. <laughs> Perhaps he's scared of me and Mjolnir again. Guys, you are, you better stop. I think we're making them angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. I told you. Now all of our super friends have arrived. Today is Monday, April 27th, and this is the Principal's Bear Huddle. Bear Huddle is a way for all North Royalton Elementary students to start the week together. It's our time to celebrate, organize, and energize for the week. We hope you've all enjoyed watching our weekly program as much as we have enjoyed creating it each week for all of you. 
We are doing our best to make something normal in the situ in the middle of a situation that is anything but normal. Thank you to our families who continue to submit material that can be used in each episode. We are always in need of students who are reciting the Pledge of Allegiance and those who want to lead us in one of our favorite phrases, today is a great day to learn something new. So let's get started. By the way, fellow heroes, did you know that our friend Wolverine was almost named the Badger? Wow. I want to say thank you to everyone for submitting pictures for Pet Therapy Week. They were absolutely awesome. I've got a fantastic brain teaser for the day. Which one of our superheroes is the best hitter on our baseball team? No idea. I of don't course. know. Batman. That's a great one, Mr. Hill and Mr. McGinnis. I did not know that about Wolverine. But I do know this. Tuesday is National Superhero Day. Tuesday of this week, we are asking our elementary students and our staff to assemble and dress in superhero costumes or t-shirts to show our support to all our real life superheroes. Those that are working to provide important and essential services during the corona shutdown. Those that work in senior or adult care, watching over our most vulnerable, those that deliver our goods, provide our city with the essential services that we all need. So show your spirit next week for our doctors, nurses, first responders, and medical researchers and for our essential workers that are keeping our grocery stores and restaurants open. These are real life superheroes. Students, please submit pictures this week dressed as your favorite superhero to show support. That concludes our announcements and I want everybody to have a superhero week and at this time, let's all please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance, Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, Roy View.
the statue of David. Hello, friends. I'm Mona Lisa. And I'm the girl with the pearl earring, and I'm here to tell you that your art teachers, Mrs. Rico, Mrs. Gill, and Miss Trunzo, really miss you. So why don't you join the Google Classrooms? They have loads of fun lessons for you. Here's a sneak peek at one of them. It's a great community project that will even get you outside. So don't be a stiff like me. Sign into your art teacher's Google Classrooms and do some art. Of course, they always forget about me, Frida Kahlo. At least I have my sweet little monkey. Anyway, here are the codes to enter the art classrooms. Stay creative and stay healthy, everyone.
Okay, good morning, boys and girls. It is Monday, April 27th, and I'm Miss Fleem. Welcome to the Council Corner. You know, last week we had talked about an attitude of gratitude, and I had reached out to some of my students, and they shared with me some gratitude or thankfulness that they had for first responders and for nurses and doctors who are out there working during the pandemic. And I wanted to share what, what some of the students had said that they were doing at home to show their attitude of gratitude. I have Olivia Sherman. She's a poster for the nurses and the doctors, and she and her mom are making badge reels for the nurses. Then I had one beer in third grade and he said that he and his mom were coloring a mandalas for the healthcare workers at the Cleveland Clinic. And there was Matthew Maslanka said that his family bought his uncle, who was a police officer, a dinner after a very long day at work and then he was gonna make a, a yard sign for his uncle's yard. So these are just a few ways some of the worldview kids were showing an attitude of gratitude uh, for last week's word and for all our first responders. I wanted to send out a special shout out to a mom in our building, Mrs. Rosewell. She is a military mom, she's in the army, and she was deployed maybe a week or two ago to New York City to go and help the healthcare workers, or I guess to anywhere she was sent in New York City, during the COVID crisis. And I wanted to thank Mrs. Rosewell because she's a superhero. She is leaving her family to go elsewhere to help out. And so boys and girls, during the month of April, it is the Military Children's Month. So I wanted to say thank you to Julia, Julia and Danny Rosewell for sharing their mom because, you know, now, now they're home without their mom. She's in New York City, and she they're sharing her to go out and help others. So if you're in Danny's class, Danny's in second grade, Julia's in kindergarten, if you are in their classroom, and if you're either doing your Google Classroom or maybe a, a Hangout or a Zoom, and you had that opportunity, please send out a thank you to them, because at this time, uh, their mom is helping out and I think they need to know that you are appreciative of what their mom is doing for the country. We had talked also last week, I had given you like two tools on what to do if you are a little anxious, nervous, frustrated about what's going on, not being able to get out and see friends, come to school, do your sporting events or whatever. And I know that it does get frustrating. And we talked about flower breathing. We also talked about hugging your pet or doing something with your pet to relax. Okay, so boys and girls, remember last week we had talked about some ways to calm your body down. Another way to calm your body down when you're concerned or worried about something is blowing bubbles. If you have bubbles at home, you can utilize them or you can probably make your own bubbles out of using dishwasher soap and water. I'm not blowing bubbles all over my computer screen. But like I tell the boys and girls at, at Royal View is when, they're, when they have concerns or worries or they're showing signs of anxiety and even when they're unable to breathe properly, something has upset them so much that they're kind of angry or mad is to blow bubbles and when you're blowing the bubble as the bubble forms put your thought whatever you're concerned about inside that bubble and just watch it float away into the universe it's out of your mind it's out of your thought calm your body down do that maybe 10 even 20 times and that's just another tool that i provided you complete on how to calm your body down just remember we are all in this together and just be kind to one another. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Cleve. And hello, everyone from Albion, Royal View, and Valley Vista. This is Kesselum here with our new character word for the week. Remember, even though we have a new word this week, we don't want to forget that we had the attitude of gratitude last week um, that we learned about. So let's keep the gratitude going because there is a lot to be grateful for. So this week's word is perseverance. And even though that word sounds very complicated and hard to understand, we've all done this before. So it means not giving up 
or hanging in there until you complete something that you've been working on, um, something that you started, even if it's hard. That's the hard part. Um, everyone right now is showing a lot of perseverance though because we're trying to push through this tough time of staying at home. We might be having a lot of big feelings that make it hard to push through. Next time we want to just give up though, let's think of all the doctors and nurses that are pushing through this tough time and working so hard to make sure that they give the sick people the best care and to help them get better. There are a lot of challenges and obstacles that make their job very difficult right now, but they are all showing perseverance by not giving up. So let's start this week by making a goal for the week. Maybe you make a goal to complete all of your school assignments by a certain day or time. Um, maybe you make a goal to show someone that you're grateful for them. Once you make your goal, remind yourself that you need to show perseverance and stick to it until you reach your goal, even if it gets hard. Think of how awesome you will feel when you reach your goal. That's all for today. Thanks, guys. Mrs. Nemeth? Thanks, Mrs. Kessel. That's some great information you gave. Hi, um, hi boys and girls from all three buildings. Mrs. Nemeth here from LBN. I wanted to give a shout out um, to a lot of people that have been persevering um, over the last, I think it's been about five or six weeks now. Um, I want to give a shout out to the parents for persevering, um, helping their students every day, um, making sure that they're doing their work and they're turning it in and checking their grades and um, all of those things that is happening in the houses. The parents are also persevering because they still have to do their job at home. So great job, parents. Students, you are persevering because you are completing all of your work and um, being responsible and turning it into your teachers, checking your Google Classroom. So you are showing a lot of perseverance. Also, the teachers, the administrators, the support staff, um, all of you are doing a great job persevering um, through this difficult time and giving your students and giving the teachers great information and great lessons. So I am so grateful for all of those people who are persevering through this difficult time. Boys and girls, I also wanted to mention that the counselors will be giving out, um, we will be providing you with perseverance papers and we would love to see those completed and turned back in. And maybe we will even get a, you will get a shout out um, on the counseling corner on the um, weekly messages um, for what you wrote on the perseverance. So I am in all of the Google Classroom teachers. I have a counseling corner in your Google Classroom with your teachers. I think Mrs. Kesslam also has um, a counseling corner in her Google Classroom for the uh, homeroom teachers. And Mrs. Ms. Clean, you will be on your own Google Classroom, correct? That's right. I have my own and, the, and I'll remind the teachers to give the kids the code. So if they want to participate in the perseverance paper, they could come right into my classroom. Okay, perfect. So boys and girls, we would love to see those um, shared with us and emailed back to us so that we can see how perseverance is happening in all of your houses. So we look forward to getting those um, this week. And that concludes our counseling corner of the announcement. So have a great week. Keep persevering and making those goals. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody. Hello. It's time for another week of Mindful Music Moments. And this week, we're listening to a selection from the Carnival of the Animals called Elephant. It was composed by Camille Saison in 1886. This week's mindful music comes from our partner, the Cleveland Orchestra. The Carnival of the Animals is a musical suite of 14 movements by the French Romantic composer, Saison. The Elephant is a musical joke. It's an early remix where Saison changed the tempo and the focus of music by another composer to create the slow, plodding sound of an elephant. So let's get ready to listen. Put your feet on the floor, hands on your lap or on your desk. Sit up nice and tall. 
close or focus your eyes and find your breath. Today, notice the low, deep sounds of the double bass instrument. What does this make you think about? How does it make you feel? Fantastic job. We'll be back tomorrow with more Mindful Music Moments.